Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and with the issue of Brexit being somewhat muted leading up to the local elections last week, with neither of the largest parties really wanting to adopt a definite position on the issue for fear of alienating voters, which they did anyway. But with that over, uh, Brexit is back on the menu and things look like they may be hotting up again. The Telegraph, which is a Tory newspaper, has today been reporting on supposed wargaming by the government on offering a public vote. Now, both the Labour and Conservative leaderships are allegedly preparing to accept that, despite their own positions, MPs may well only support any sort of deal on the condition of a public vote. The report even suggested that the referendum would include options of the withdrawal agreement and a no-deal Brexit in the event of Leave winning again. Now, I've said before that I don't see how they can offer an option in a no-deal Brexit that is illegal to deliver, but that being said, we've already seen ample evidence that British politics is not even paying scant attention to the law, quite frankly. And politically, it would definitely be better to have the options as stated there. So how would a second referendum be carried out when the first one wasn't, cry the Leave supporters? They ignored the first, they'll ignore the second if Leave still win. Well, no. They didn't ignore the first. Uh, I wish they had, because then we wouldn't have had to sacrifice our economy, our society and our international standing to this farce. But the first referendum was not binding on Parliament. They didn't have to pay any attention to it whatsoever. It's a shame they did. The second one would be. Now, the idea is that Parliament would vote in favour of a bill which would agree all possible outcomes on the referendum in advance. This did not happen for the first referendum. They simply enacted uh, legislation to conduct the, le the, the referendum. So what the other thing, bear in mind as well, of course, is that par if Parliament had pre-approved the referendum results for the first referendum, then the referendum would have been voided anyway due to the illegality of it. The only reason that the last referendum wasn't voided by the courts was because it was advisory only. That is what they said. But in this case, whatever the outcome, it would be applied straight away. There'd be no more votes because the votes would have already taken place and been passed by Parliament. The outcome would already be written into law. As such, if campaigns did break electoral law this time round, the result would be voided. So it's important that any criminal acts are spotted and prosecuted quickly this time round. At least we'll know what to look for this time, won't we? But as to the referendum itself, so if the vote was for a no-deal exit then the dates would also presumably be mentioned in the Act of Parliament and we would definitely leave on that day. There'd be no further voting to do. If it was for the withdrawal agreement, that would be implemented right away as well. And if it were to remain, well, that's the easiest of all. In fact, I think it would be good to have no deal on the ballot paper, if at all possible, for two reasons. One, without it, people will claim that May's deal is worse than leaving and that's why more people voted to remain that the real leave option wasn't even on the ballot paper. You would never dispel that perception. Secondly, a majority of people do not want to leave with no deal. The majority of people don't even want to leave, but they certainly don't want to leave with no deal. That's a complete fallacy, and only having the option available would show that to be a minority. So how would the referendum be worded? Well, as it hasn't been even officially confirmed that the government's even thinking about it, we don't know, but I've always said that the most sensible way is with two questions. The first one, do you wish to remain, the, the UK to remain within the EU or to leave, you know, along the lines of the first one, but then it needs a second one. In the event that the UK were to leave the EU, something like, would you like to do so along the lines of the agreed withdrawal agreement or to leave without agreement? You could even throw in the option of the permanent customs union, you know, workers rights, all the rest of it in line with Corbyn's position. Now, that way you don't split the remain vote with two leave options. And also everyone gets a say on the nature of the withdrawal, even the people who voted to remain. And I would also add that I think it's, it's very important that all British citizens of voting age should be allowed to take part this time. None of this nonsense about residency, uh, which might make sense in elections, but not for a referendum on the sovereignty of the country. So... Is the story in the newspaper credible? After all, it's only been reported. Uh, you know, it's a newspaper reporting on secret meetings with nothing confirmed by either Labour or the Conservative leaderships. We also know that the British media don't let a little thing like facts get in the way of a good story. 
But the Telegraph does have a close relationship with the Conservatives and it may even be a deliberately leaked story just to gauge opinion on the plan. There's no suggestion in the report that this is definitely going to happen anyway, only that the government is considering all possible outcomes if they offered it. You know, so in other words, they're seriously considering it is the allegation, if allegation is the right word there. Although it might be easy to think that we're just going to sleepwalk towards the next Brexit extension and then ask for another. There are other factors at play that add some credibility to this. Now, by far, the greatest factor is that Theresa May is under massive pressure to resign. And that pressure is only going to get worse and very, very soon. So, you know, she is likely, though this is me speculating, to be of the view that whoever follows her would split the party by taking a very different stance on Brexit. This seems obvious to me because May has taken her line simply to keep the party together, not because it's the best thing to do for the country. So surely it stands to reason that in her head, anyone taking a different line would split the Tory party. So she is probably convinced that anyone else would fatally damage the party. So I'd infer that she is desperate to get something agreed by Parliament before she is ousted. Now that could well mean she only has a few weeks. It's difficult to, for anyone to tell at the moment, but that seems likely. But more of that on that in a minute. So she certainly seems desperate to get something agreed before uh, the European elections as well. Uh, and if that is on her mind, that basically means something has to emerge next week, really. The report also suggested, again, that Theresa May is prepared to offer a comprehensive but temporary customs union arrangement. But as many have already pointed out, and I mentioned myself, that's not an offer because the withdrawal agreement already includes that. You know, she might as well offer to make the sun rise tomorrow. I think these Tory newspapers keep putting that in to make it sound like the Conservative government are trying to compromise and that it's Labour who refuse, um, when of course they're offering nothing new at all. At least in that regard, this report did also suggest that she is reportedly ready to offer a permanent alignment with the EU on worker rights. However, that's not hers to offer. After all, a future government can just tear that up. No act of parliament is immune to amendment or abolishment by a future one. That's the nature of sovereignty. And, and Theresa May's made it clear. As soon as any deal passes, she's gone. She's no longer prime minister. So anything that is agreed with Theresa May is null and void once, once it's agreed, ironically. Um, besides, there are loads of MPs on both sides of the House who are saying that they are opposed to any deal cooked up between Labour and the Conservatives, and many more who may simply not be saying so at the moment. So this has been a feature of Brexit, really, when you think about it. Jeremy Corbyn was this week saying that only Labour can heal the Brexit divisions. He is wrong, of course. Uh, there has been something that has united both Remainers and Leavers throughout this entire process. Opposition to the Brexit deal. There is simply no formal Brexit arrangement that can get agreement. One side wants to remain and fully integrated with the EU. One side wants to leave with no ties whatsoever. And that is why it's certainly believable that the Conservatives would be wargaming a public vote, as stated. It would get a majority approval in the House if supported by both May and Corbyn. As things stand, it seems to be the only thing that would. But then you'd come to that Tory split. All Brexiteers know that the majority of the country want to remain. That is why they have taken the most extraordinary actions to suppress the very notion of a public vote. They've threatened to bring down their own government indeed. And that may well be their ultimate plan. Not to trigger a general election. That could be fatal to their plans. But just to get rid of May. But the issue of removing Theresa May, which could happen next month, I'm going to cover in a video later on today. Suffice to say for now that it looks like a public vote is going to be passed through Parliament, um, or rather if it is, then they, the ERG may decide to take the nuclear option. I certainly can't see them standing idly by and just shouting and ranting about it, and I strongly suspect that if this reported wargaming of a public vote is genuinely being carried out, if the reports are accurate, then what May is probably really considering is not the public reaction to it, but that of her own parliamentary party. It may even be that Corbyn and May are fully seized of the idea of a public vote being necessary, but not sure of how to implement it whilst maintaining their own very different political objectives. We may not have long to find out, however. 
So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content, click the bell notification as well. Until next time, I'll see you later.